reading from the book of wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They deemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastise a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine, and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. Verbum Domini. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. He guides me in my past for his name's sake. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. died with Christ, we shall also live with him. If we hold out to the end, we shall also reign with him. Dominos vobiscum. Lectio Sancti Evangelii secundum Ioannem. Jesus said to his disciples, All that the Father gives me shall come to me. No one who comes will I ever reject. 
because it is not to do my own will that I have come down from heaven, but to do the will of him who sent me. It is the will of him who sent me that I should lose nothing of what he has given me, rather that I should raise it up on the last day. Indeed, this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks upon the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. Him I will raise on the last day. Verbum Domini. We welcome in a special way Father Damien Anumba, pastor of Sacred Heart Catholic Church in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, and also his use as young people from Sacred Heart Parish and St. William Parish. Very warm welcome to each of you to EWTN from the Friars. In the month of November, the church remembers the souls of the faithful departed. That is, souls who died in a state of grace, who are undergoing purification for temporal punishment due to sin. The church gives the name purgatory to the process of purification of the souls of the just who have yet to behold the beatific vision of heaven. November 1st starts out with the solemn celebration of all saints, those who behold the beatific vision of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that is our ultimate goal. That is our destination, our final homeland. Some of us call the place of our origin, our birth, our homeland. Some people have dual citizenship. Those are different ethnicities from different countries. You might have dual citizenship, say, in Ireland or Italy. So you can be a citizen of the United States and yet a citizen of another country. But our true, as Christians, our true citizenship is in heaven. That's our fatherland, our destination, our goal. All Saints is a solemnity that the church holds up high for all of us proud to venerate all saints that are those canonized and uncanonized saints recognized by the church, those who are in heaven. And I might add that we like to think that the celebration of all saints is just those formally declared. But heaven is full of people that are not formally like the canonized saints declared. Thank God. Thank God. Heaven is meant for you. It's made for you. And in a way, it begins now. It begins here, in, this, in the life of grace. The life of heaven that begins with us, that we share in Christ's relationship through sanctifying grace. Through the gifts of the sacraments, most especially the sacrament of baptism. That each one of you were consecrated, set apart, for God. When water and the Holy Spirit was poured upon you, you were consecrated and made holy. Do you really believe that? That you are more holy than what the Jews believe to be the holiest place on the face of the earth, the temple? That you are a temple. 
The day after All Saints, the church commemorates all souls, that is, the church suffering, the church in purgatory. And most religious orders have a separate All Souls Day celebrated within the month of November. The Franciscan order celebrates the commemoration of all souls, all the deceased of the seraphic order, and this would include all three branches of the Franciscan order, the Order of Friars Minor, the Conventuals, the Capuchins, along with the Second Order Nuns, the Poor Clares, and all Third Order Franciscans, both religious and secular. And the prayers of this Mass also mention all of the deceased benefactors of the Seraphic family. And that would include all those who have ever supported those of the Seraphic family, the Franciscans. The church suffering, those in purgatory, the catechism teaches in paragraph 1030, are all who die in God's grace and his friendship, but still imperfectly purified are in need, indeed assured of their eternal salvation, but after death undergo purification, so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter into heaven." Paragraph 1032 further states, the teaching is also based on the practice of prayer for the dead already mentioned in sacred scripture in the Old Testament, the book of Maccabees. Therefore, Judas Maccabeus made atonement for the dead that they might be delivered from their sin. From the beginning, the church has honored the memory of the dead and offered prayers and suffrage for them, above all the Eucharistic sacrifice, so that thus purified, they might attain the beatific vision of God. The church also commends almsgiving, indulgences, and works of penance undertaken on behalf of the dead. This is an important point that the sacrifice of the cross, which is represented here on the altar, the representation of Calvary in an unbloody manner, this reaches the souls in purgatory. There's a very famous image of a priest offering the Holy Mass, and as he's elevating the sacred host, that the souls of the just in heaven, the saints, are looking down upon the Holy Mass, and the souls in purgatory are looking upward and grasping at what is being offered on the altar. This is an image precisely of what the holy sacrifice of the Mass is, because this is where the church triumphant the church militant, which is us, who are running the race, fighting the faith, fighting for our salvation. This is where all of us, the church triumphant, the church militant, and the church in purgatory meet. Right here at this altar, at every Mass. Venerable Fulton J. Sheen says belief in purgatory has declined in just the proportion that the modern mind forgot the two most important things in the world. He says the purity of God and the heinousness of sin. Belief in purgatory tends to wane when we forget these two things how holy God is, and just what sin is. In other words, how ugly sin is, and how nasty sin is, but even more so the holiness of God, the holiness of the just. St. Francis of Assisi said, keep a clear eye toward life's end, do not forget the purpose and destiny as God's creature. 
What you are in his sight is what you are and nothing more. Remember that when you leave this earth, you can take nothing with you that you have received, but only what you have given. That's a good lesson. We take with us only that which we have given away. And what is that? Love. Love, charity. That's what we take with us to eternal life. He says, a heart enriched by honest service, love, and sacrifice and courage. For St. Francis, he always kept the reality of death and eternal life before him. And this is his prayer. All praise be to your, all praise be yours, my Lord, sister, through, through sister death, from whose embrace no mortal can escape. Woe to those who die in mortal sin. Happy those she finds doing your will. That is the life of the just. The second death can do them no harm. Praise and bless my Lord and give him thanks and serve him with great humility. St. Francis saw sister death as a natural part of life through, much, through whom we must continue our life with God. Life is so fragile. We are not even guaranteed tomorrow. Whenever we encounter death, we are reminded just how short our pilgrimage here is to eternal life. Compared to eternity, life on earth is like a passing shadow. And throughout our lives, there are moments when we are reminded, like St. Francis, of our mortality. That is, life is passing. When the death of a friend or loved one comes at an old age, and even more so when an unexpected, very young age comes, when a person dies, we are confronted with the fundamental questions of human life. Why am I here? What is this life about? Where am I going? These are good questions. These are questions that we should all ask ourselves. Ask the Lord. Where am I going, Lord, after this life? What is prepared for me after this earthly life? Hopefully each one of us has pondered these questions very deeply in prayer. Pope St. John Paul II would say that the answer to every question, that is, every trial of life, every circumstance that makes us stop and say, why? And we all say that. Every question that we ever ask, the answer is within Jesus Christ. He provides the answer. He is the answer to all questions that we ever ask. In him is summed up all of salvation. He is salvation. He is the Redeemer and the Son of God. And we have a sacred obligation to pray for the souls of the faithful departed. It's a spiritual work of mercy to pray for the living and the dead. And today we lift up in a very special way all the souls connected to the Franciscan family. It is a good and pious custom to pray at the beginning of every meal. Some people pray, may the souls of the faithfully departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. At the beginning of the meal, some people pray this, and some people might pray it at the end of their meal. It's a good and pious custom to do. And also to visit the cemetery. If you haven't done it already sometime this week, the first week of November, sometime throughout this month, maybe it would be a good practice to visit the souls of your loved ones, those who have passed away. 
Sometimes I like to do this when I go on my home visit to visit my grandparents and to pray for them and to honor them in some way and maybe even to clean their grave marker as it gets old. One of our brothers did this to some of his loved ones, went to the cemetery and actually spent almost all day cleaning the grave markers of his loved ones. What a great practice that would be, especially for young people, actually any of us to do, to scrape the crud and, the, and even the mold that can get on grave markers. And I end by saying the prayer of con, uh, commendation that we say at the end of a funeral liturgy. And this is something that the church, when everybody is gathered at the grave site, this is a prayer that is said at the cemetery. And I say it on behalf of all of those who have died in the Franciscan family, and also on behalf of all those who are viewers and listeners, people have had people die the last couple of years, your loved ones and your family, your friends. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brothers and sisters in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, they may rise with him on the last day. We give thanks for all the blessings which you have bestowed upon your sons and daughters in this life. They are signs of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servants. And help us who remain to comfort one another with the insurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you with our brothers and sisters forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.